<clears throat> my Lords, um, I'm grateful to my noble friend, uh, Lord Avery, for raising the issue of chancel repair liability for debate today and uh, for the interesting contributions from other noble lords who have spoken. Um, I feel in some ways that the right reverend prelate uh, should be here, I won't say in the dock, <laughs> but here with me to answer some of the uh, speeches which I think all uh, went around the theme of, in some ways, uh, changing this present situation. Um, I've listened carefully to the concerns expressed about chancellor repair liability and I'm sure that the Ministry of Justice uh, will consider them in detail. Uh, but I must make clear at the moment, and I hope this won't come as too much of a shock to noble lords, uh, except perhaps to Lord, to Lord Kennedy, uh, that the government has no plans to change the law at present relating to chance repair liability. Nonetheless, it is because we take the concerns raised seriously that we are keeping the situation under review. Now, I don't have time um, to uh, go through the long uh, history of uh, chance repair liability. And, uh, in fact, uh, the noble, my noble friend Lord Avery has dealt with that ad admirably, as uh, other noble lords have done. Um, <clears throat> the Law Commission has considered the, the liability a number of times since the 1960s, and the present legal position is that chancel repair liability is an ancient but valid right that enables the owner, who in England is usually the PCC, to enforce the liability. This right can play an important part in the finances of the 5,000 or so churches with the benefit of that liability. Now, in earlier times, the main problem was that the liability was sometimes difficult, if not impossible, for a prospective buyer to discover. Now, following the removal of its status as an overriding interest in October 2013, its existence is readily discoverable. This is a major improvement, and this was referred to uh, by my noble friend, Lady Wilcox. On the other hand, the unpredictability of the instance of the liability, its open-ended size, and particularly its joint and several nature, mentioned by the noble Lord, Lord Cashman, and the noble Lord Rooker, uh, still attract criticism. It is, however, unclear how far these potential problems are causing widespread real difficulties in practice. The Ministry of Justice's impression is that enforcement now and for some time past against ho ordinary homeowners is rare. This may be a consequence of the relatively small number of chancels, probably about five or six hundred, where the liability falls on individual property owners. It may also be because PCCs are reluctant to enforce the liability. Their wide omission may, perhaps, not be best served by imposing financial hardships on individual members of the local community. That is, however, a decision for individual PCCs who can get advice from the church, the charity commission, and their own legal advice. And under the Charities Act, uh, Section 110 of the Charities Act, 2011, trustees can get reassurance from the charity commission that they are acting in accordance with their duties. It may also be that the level of concern about the liability has been temporarily increased by the registration. And um, my noble friend, uh, Lady Wilcox, asked how many ordinary householders are affected by this liability. Um, we don't have the statistics indicating how many ordinary householders are affected, but the land registry has received about 9,000 applications for registration of, uh, of notices and 160 applications for the registration of a caution against the first registration. What we can be sure about is that there are enough people who may be affected to take this uh, subject seriously. Um, the government appreciates that ho homeowners who were unaware that their home was subject to liability may well have been worried by the notice. And the noble Lord, Lord Rooker's speech reminded us uh, of the effects to real people and not just in theory. But the reality is that their legal position has not changed. And the fears that were expressed leading up to the deadline of October 2013 that the registration of a notice can render a property unsaleable or unmortgageable does not seem to have materialised. 
nor does the market in chance and repair liability insurance seem to have disappeared. My Lords, this is not to say that chance or repair liability cannot or will not cause major problems for some homeowners, but at present it is not clear that liability is doing so in practice. However, even if reform is necessary, it may not be straightforward. And as the Right Reverend Prelate uh, made clear in a very measured speech, Abolition, as advocated by the noble Lord uh, Avebury and Lord Cashman and Lord Rooker and others, would almost certainly require compensation to be paid because chance repair liability is a property right protected by the Human Rights Act, as confirmed by the House of Lords. The sums involved in aggregate might run into hundreds of millions of pounds. And the Right Reverend Prelate uh, suggested that compensation is the way to abolition. But the only thing he didn't mention is by whom. Uh, Lord Kennedy of Southwark said this is where the government comes in. Um, there are also uh, schemes for release, redemption or compounding which might be created. Uh, or present ones, as outlined in the ecclesi ecclesiastical dilapidations measure of 1923, improved. But their cost and attractiveness to prospective users would have to be considered carefully. And the noble Lord Lytton mentioned the some of the difficulties in estimating um, a compounded amount to taking into account the net present value for an unlimited liability stretching forever. What discount would rate, for example, would one use taking into account the average interest rate across all years forever? I know that my noble friend Lord Avebury and other noble lords uh, will be disappointed that the government is not developing any proposals for reform at present. But I can assure him and other noble lords that the Ministry of Justice will consider evidence of actual hardship or general problems that the law may cause and will keep this situation under review. Noble Lord uh, sits down. Can I say that having heard the contribution of, the, of Noble Lords, in particularly from the right hand parallel of Bishop of Derby, there's a most disappointing response from the government and may make no attempt at all to do with the issue? Well, the problem is that nobody has come up with a very simple way of how we do it except by uh, producing compensation because that is a property right under the Human Rights Act. The issue is who provides compensation to the people who own the right, and we haven't at the moment decided that there is necess necessity to do that when there is an actual example of hardship taking place at the moment. But the reason that I said we will keep it under review is that if there is evidence of actual hardship that is taking place, then we will consider this measure. Our Lord, as we have in a couple of minutes, may I also ask the Minister before he sits down, uh, whether the government will consider encouraging the church to consider schemes of compensation uh, that uh, uh, I mentioned at the end of my speech and uh, um, which have been successful in certain parishes. As we heard, that one uh, householder managed to compound his, his liability for a sum of £45. If the church could be encouraged to consider that sort of solution, it might solve the financial problem. I believe that the uh, church is in discussions with the National Secular Society, for example, in dealing with this, and the government has said that it is prepared to join in those discussions or take account of them. But beyond that, I am not able to commit the government, but I know that we will be interested to, A, listen to what they have to say, and we are prepared to take part in those discussions. And I... Lord, sit down. Is it not possible to say today? Is it possible to say today that, having heard what noble lords have said today, that he would welcome, you know, discussions between his officials, Lord Averbury, and I'm pretty sure the Church of England, because if this could be resolved, everyone would be happy here. So I don't see why he can't even offer that to the committee. I, well, I think I indicated that when it comes to dealing with the Church uh, and the National Secular Society, we would take part in discussions if required. And I think I also made clear that if there was evidence, the Ministry of Justice would consider it. 
and I don't think that is unreasonable in the lack of any actual evidence of hardship at the moment. But if there's evidence of hardship, I think um, we would uh, discuss that. And of course, we're always willing to talk to Lord Avery at any time or any other noble lords. My lords, the committee stands adjourned until 5pm. Thank you.